What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. Not just freedom in a financial sense, but freedom in an emotional and spiritual and mental sense, because we've got a guy here, we're here with us that has written an amazing book, but also has a deep and very successful background in real estate, earning over a million in GCI in his past and realized that uh, it wasn't fulfilling, which if any of you are on the journey to that or have got there or have experienced a measure of that, you know what we're talking about. Um, it's uh, basically chasing that sense of being enough and no matter how much income or how many deals you do, not quite hitting it. Uh, and this falls under kind of the the heading of, uh, of building a lifestyle business. So building a business that really fulfills you uh, internally while also fulfilling your financial goals. So we're going to get to him in a second. First of all, let me bring in the junior grandmaster himself, my co-partner in all real estate related crime and speaking mm -hmm. partner yesterday, Greg McDaniel. Greg, what's up today? What up, Johnson? Hey, man. Long day of travel yesterday, but what an awesome opportunity to talk with Brian Casella. We got uh, Glenn Twiddle, Naomi, just an awesome group. Anyone who's watching this who was there was blessed to meet you guys so much. So honored that you guys took time out of your day to come hang with us. Awesome. Awesome opportunity. And yes, we are going to be doing more of them. So you will see our ugly faces more. I am so sorry. We will put a, fa um, a face mask on Matt. But and so, <laughs> you guys, check it out. I got a new toy that showed up today. This is my this is my new little drone. I can put it in my pocket, and this thing got HD camera. Dude, check out how small this thing is, dude. Watch this. You can fold the little arms back. You can literally put this thing in your pocket and take it with you anywhere you go. Super lightweight, and it lasts for like 20, 30 minutes on flight time. Really, really cool new toy. Awesome stuff. And I learned something. You guys want to know what I learned? I learned that I suck at follow-up. And that uh, my, all my hot leads that I have gained through my hours and hours of mojo calling, oh, I've left about two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars on the table since two thousand and fifteen because I didn't follow them up. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I believe it. Yes. Oh man, but don't worry. It's it's that you're just plowing through and for and pulling them behind to team members that are religiously following up. Oh wait a minute, no, they're not. No, they're not. Right, no, so they're not. Let's, <laughs> let's bring on a special <laughs> guest, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll let him mock you, too. Um, no, but, uh, <laughs> very, very, very successful former real estate agent turned author of Resucceed, James Colburn. James, how are you? Real well, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you being here. So you're yeah. an introduction from Isaac Stegman, who uh, Greg and I had the pleasure of, of interviewing here last year about, and it's funny because the book that he wanted to cover, Hal Elrod's book on uh, the, the Miracle Morning. So yeah. you've taken a little bit different, not not spin on it, but essentially you're, you are building on some of those same concepts in the sense of setting yourself up psychologically and mentally for success. Hal took it in the sense of the morning routine, which a lot of successful people have, were already or were inspired by Hal's book to do that if they weren't already doing a morning routine, but you've taken it to another level. So just briefly give us the, the idea of the book, and then we'll kind of dive into your real estate background and how all this stuff kind of uh, really gelled for you. Well, really, it was like you had touched on. It's really just the realization that we chase after kind of the next transaction, the next transaction. We're only as good as the next transaction. And initially, when you're getting rolling, I mean, that gives you the fuel um, to show up again tomorrow and to get out there and kind of turn over all the rocks necessary for the next opportunity to meet, greet people that you don't know, to say hi to folks that you don't know, to be in front of people, talking with them, um, whether they know someone that wants to buy real estate or um, whether they personally want to buy or sell real estate. So that's the initial kind of the initial step. But what ends up happening is when you get a certain level of success, you actually start to get lost in that success. You end up um, losing a bit of yourself in the process, and people know you for your success rather than know you. Um, my realization was that as, as I started to get known for my success, whether that be the people I work with or you know, whether that be my clients um, or even in the community that I work, I, um, I started to get known for my success rather than uh, anyone knowing me. But then the bigger deal is that I stopped knowing myself too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ended up, I ended up chasing so much of this whole success craziness that I forgot who I was. And that, that kind of realization that I, I speak early on in my book about the realization that I really, I built this great big gigantic business that was very one dimensional. And mm -hmm. in that I, I kind of disappeared. And my success was all that people know of me.
So, yeah. so wh- wh- when did that take place in your business? Did that happen like at the very tail end? Did you have that realization? You're like, wait a minute, people are just looking at me as a as a ATM machine or you know a top producer. They're not they're not they're not seeing James as the guy. They're just seeing you know this thing you've created. Well, yeah, and just so you know, I still practice real estate today, okay. but the, but my my approach is much differently in terms of how I go about it and how I attract business. But for me, and and obviously. Uh, I had several years of ramp up and I, I kind of played this game of adding, you know, 20, 30, 40 sales a year. And I got quite good at it. In fact, anything I put my mind to, I mean, and I'm sure many of us that uh, either listen to the show and or even in this room right here, we we know that if we put our mind to something, uh, believe it or not, it actually occurs if we uh, if we have a clear enough picture. But what's interesting is it wasn't as much me being known by others for my success. It was that I viewed myself as only a cash machine. And, uh, and there, there was nothing, you know, there's really nothing. I mean, there's nothing redeeming about viewing yourself as a cash machine. In fact, if anything, you have this diminishing return of uh, fulfillment because of that. And real estate, it offers it offers such amazing freedom and, and, and amazing opportunity for you know to to kind of build your dreams to to provide for your family or you know to 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 meet the goals that you have but also you want to come at the other end fulfilled with passion and joy yeah. and yeah. and and i see that missing in our business planning so the difference oh, yeah. for me was adding fulfillment passion joy as a key component of my business planning and yeah. that's where the shift happened. Well, no, and, and this is, yeah, this is where one of the key points that I'd, I'd love to bring, for you to bring out before we jump into a little bit more detail on how some of the things came together was you mentioned that um, that you don't have to like I, I think, and I'm definitely this way. We talked a little bit about this in our in our prep call that for years I felt like if I was if I enjoyed the journey I would lose my edge and wouldn't push myself hard enough to actually get there. And of course, the opposite is true because what you're doing is you're switching off what uh, like Maxwell Moss will call that winning feeling or whatever you want to call it. Like you're literally switching it off inside of you because you're not allowing yourself to even enjoy the journey. I guarantee you there is a ton of people in the audience that are listening or watching right now that feel that exact same way. So how do you counteract that so that you can let go of that but still have your edge and still feel like you're obsessed and pursuing that, um, you know, the outward goals you've set for yourself? Well, the first thing I did, I mean, my one of my worst, well, in my very best and worst years, which many of your listeners probably have had, was this, you know, the best year was also my worst year. So mm-hmm. I had sold 120 houses just with an assistant. I didn't have a large team. I had new construction helping me with that. Um, so there was some autopilot, about 50 deals a year, just autopilot, then a fairly big book of resale business. And then I had an assistant back in my office and I told her, your job is just to make me be a hero. So basically I was setting it up where I was going to be known for like my hero-esque ability to pull off the uh, the amazing for people and help, you know, help them achieve their dreams. And, and even in that worst year, I remember Christmas Eve 2006, which we all remember this great 2006 year, right? Mm-hmm. Where you pretty much could skip putting a sign in a yard. Um, <laughs> you could pretty, <laughs> pretty much yes. Skip, you could wait a day and skip the flyer uh, and you'd still <laughs> sell it. And uh, and I literally played games where I did that. It was like fishing, actually. Um, but in, in Christmas Eve 2006, I was at our vacation home. I was sitting on the couch. And in my book, I mentioned or I described this whole moment where if you looked at me, if you're up in the corner and you're looking down in the room, you think this guy's living the dream. But what I was trying to do in my head was will my phone to ring. I had a start <laughs> shirt in the car. I was staring at the phone, literally thinking, hey, I put my mind to anything. I can make this thing ring if I, if I think hard enough on this, or I can make a call. Someone's got to buy a house. It's Christmas Eve, and I had lost myself, right? So I was only as good as my next deal, even on a Christmas Eve. And I had, and I had made a goal. My, my business plan had said I'd sell 120 houses that year, and I had it all broken out on where they come from, you know, 10 from this, 15 from that, 40 from this, 30 from this. And I had achieved all those things, and yet I was trying to will my phone to ring. That's the moment that I realized I had derailed. So I hired this coach the next year. 
you think I would have learned the the you know learned through that experience um, that I I kind of derailed, but instead I hired the coach. I said your your job honestly is to help me go from 1.2 million dollars in GCI to 1.5 million dollars. She said, James, I got a real quick question for you, and uh, and I by the way I can help you with this. And by the way, I never ever met my coach in person, which was highly effective. In fact, it's how I do coaching now with my clients. That basically I do this thing called resuccy coaching, where basically I never meet them in person because the, it allows for much more transparency in the conversation, and you don't as a coach get wrapped up in their body language and and you know and especially you know in our profession all we do is read people and their genuineness. So it's better to I, I see it as powerful and so we're meeting on the phone and she said I have one question for you before I help you make 300 more grand she said James do you play Legos with your kids huh. and, I, and, and I was like okay that's a weird question but I really I kind of want to see where this is going so I said um, no because I get on my knees and I, I just I don't have any more energy for them I'm think I, I end up start I start playing and I start thinking about inspections I need to do or phone calls like the second you get still yeah you realize all the things you need to do in real estate we don't allow ourselves to be still we want to keep ourselves like you had mentioned Matt really on edge keeping ourselves like few, you know feet to the fire like that's why I never ever want to cash in the bank I'd always go buy another rental property if I had a hundred grand laying around I'd have to plow it into another rental property because last thing I wanted was this massive fuse where which would allow me to basically get soft and not pursue real estate yeah. So I, I ended up talking with her about this Legos thing, explained to her I had such a challenge. She said, James, I tell you what, if you can play Legos genuinely with your kids and enjoy it, you only then will you make another $300,000. Because at this point, you've hit this point where either you're going to make less and work harder, or you're going to make more and have more fulfillment. That's a true point. That, wow. that was a huge, huge moment for me. And, and I'm glad that she asked you that. I mean, otherwise you would have been toiling away and you would become more miserable, more miserable. The family Absolutely. life would have gone yeah. by the wayside. The business would have gone by the wayside. You would have blamed yourself, the coach, everyone around you, your assistant, yeah. everything, when it really was absolutely you at the core of everything, but you would have been too blinded to see it. But she opened your eyes, took those shells off of it, and you're able to say, oh, that's a really good point. The more you slow down, I tell a lot of people when they're like, Greg, I want to make X, Y, and Z. I'm like, great, let's make a life plan. Show me your yeah. life. What's your ideal life? Where yes. do you want to work? Who do you want to work? Where do you want to work? What do you want to wear? The whole nine yards. And then put your business plan on top. Fill those gaps in. Happiest human being on planet Earth. But people always do it the opposite way, right? Yeah. Take a step back, really, is what you're kind of saying. And, right. and the other thing she said is that fear really, like initially in real estate, we use fear as a fuel. So it's like mm -hmm. fear of having to go and say, hey, everyone, you know how I sent you that postcard saying I'm going to be in real estate? Well, I'm not because I failed. You know, I mean, <laughs> we, we use it. We use this fear as this as a fuel but what's interesting is fear becomes a negative fuel over time yeah. and yeah. it fear actually takes from you it doesn't give to you so i went into this whole um figuring out how to build fulfillment and figure out how to inject it into my business plan so it's not give up cash give up money give up success achievement so that you can be fulfilled i believe that as you get a better clearer image a clear picture of what fulfillment really truly like you were mentioning Greg like what's the ideal life right and I mm -hmm. call it a million dollar life like what's a million dollar life look like versus just a million dollars yeah and and yeah. really getting a clear picture of that and then pursuing it so as you become more of you you become more successful is the way I view it so I'm not preaching giving up success I'm just saying that you know as Tony Robbins once uh, quoted um, uh, success without fulfillment is failure. And I, I just, I believe that I just, I've experienced it. Yeah. Well, everybody can have success, but if you're not truly happy, the, the richest man in town, isn't the happiest man in town. Yeah. The guy sitting in the mansion with the two, I mean, with the 10 Ferraris and the two planes is generally not the happiest person out there. So, I mean, yeah. making a lot of money, it, that's, that's somewhat more or less the easiest part about it, but finding that balance. And a lot of people say are throwing out the whole work-life balance thing right now, but a work-life balance can be anything that makes sense to you and what your idea of success means. It could be some people are family people. I'm not, I don't have kids. I don't have a wife yeah. and you know that I don't have, I don't want to come home and, and don't yeah. come home to a, to a kid and a wife. Yeah. Right. But other people love that. I come yeah. home to, you know, a great, like Matt and I came off a great speaking event yesterday and that was my high, you know, being able to speak and hang out with really, really cool people and yeah. the whole nine. So yeah. what does that work-life yeah. balance mean? 
Yeah, yeah, and contribution, and really, you know, and, and Matt and I had talked earlier about this whole enoughness concept, and so a lot of the people that are really, really, truly chasing after the next deal and chasing after maybe, if you will, the next Ferrari, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like showing up in your career, showing up in your real estate practice as if you are, uh, as if there's a deficit that you're trying to write. You know, it, it, yeah. what I'm challenging, what I'm saying is you're already enough. You literally were enough the moment you were born, the moment you made your first cry. And so when you show up in, in your career, in your life already enough, then that success really takes off. And then you really, really t start to experience the joy of, you know, a lot of people go into real estate thinking, oh, freedom. But, you know, freedom doesn't happen. That's not just I'm in real estate, I'm free. Freedom happens because you create habits, and those habits over time become uh, things that you don't even think about. You know, so it's structure becomes habits. Habits become things that we don't even think about anymore. We just do. And mm -hmm. that's when freedom occurs. And if as a part of your ha habitual, you know, business planning, you build in fulfillment and you say, no, I'm going to make sure that, you know, that I celebrate my successes. I'm going to make sure that I, you know, like, I mean, you, that I'm going to get these speaking engagements where I see the light go on in people's lives, where I can contribute to others, where I'm not just chasing after the, the next three or two and a half percent. Yeah, that's yeah, that 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 concept of freedom doesn't happen automatically. It happens because you create structure and then habits and the habits create the freedom that like that right there. That's an incredible takeaway. Yeah. Um, so I want to go back to something that you that you mentioned just briefly. And, and we talked about it before uh, in like in the, the lead up to the show. But there was the question that that coach asked you. There's a reference that you made to it being it, it like it caused this sense, like just not just a realization or not just like a light bulb moment, but there was a level of like, like disgust in like towards yourself. It like turned on this massive light bulb, not just in a positive way, but in, it made you look at yourself differently. And I've been thinking a lot about how that plays a role in bringing people to the point where they're ready to make like a big, massive change. And you wish that you could bring people to that point for them. Unfortunately, you can't. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. now it took, now that coach could have, would have loved to, to do that. But the, and that question may have been designed to do that, and that's great. But yeah. that question was the right thing for you in that moment, and it caused you to look at yourself differently. So tell me a little bit about like what what you felt like. What did that make you feel like in the moment that led you to make a decision? Okay, this is it. Like I have to change. Well, I mean, you know, the market also crashed, by the way. So in 2000, <laughs> in 2009, so I definitely had a deficit. But by the way, when you go from one five and you lose 80 percent of your income, you still make a damn good income. Right. So. Uh, mm -hmm. so, But but what but the, actually, I, I'll say that, you know, when 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 I when the market crashed is the way it did in Seattle um, and I, I literally went down 80 percent the next, you know, in 2008. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and, uh, my, you know, and the couple builders I work with both went on, uh, you know, antipsychotic medicine, because by the way, they were addicted to the adrenaline rush of the deal, which by mm. the way, real estate agents were as well. But what's interesting what? is that the, you know, life happens for us, not to us. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting because when the market crashed, I was able to say, Hey, I'm nothing's different. Like we're still going to Hawaii for a month. Like we're, my kids are still in private school. You know, I've still got a savings account. Um, so obviously this chase after more, and it reminds me of the book Essentialism, which he talks about the undisciplined pursuit of more versus the disciplined pursuit of less, which equals more. Yeah. And that's really what I'm speaking of. But, you know, the whole day of disgust that you're talking about was this moment where I realized, you know what, James, you are more than one dimension. You have more to deliver than peddling houses and I never changed my career, but I felt like, hey, I've got this massive platform. I work with all these people that are coming and going, both buyers and sellers, as well as fellow agents that want to work with me or that want to, you know, learn how I did things or whatever. And what are you going to do with that? I mean, this platform is in front of you, and yet you've kind of looked at that as like the necessary evil of doing the next deal. Um, yeah. uh, Olson wrote, writes in the book, uh, The Slight Edge, about his day of disgust. Um, I think he even uses the word disgust, which is this moment where you realize, you know what? I, I really, really um, am designed for more, and, it, and it's my responsibility to ask the questions. So that, that really leads me to this evening discipline that I created. 
um, a success ritual, if you will, similar to the Miracle Morning that Hal, yeah. El, Hal Elrod's one of my coaches, and we he's he's the uh, Miracle Morning guy, and I'm mm-hmm. kind of the evening ritual guy, and so that's that that's what the book's all about that I wrote. Really? And so before what, we dive, what's the effect on that? I mean, the morning versus evening. I mean, is there is I mean, is it because there's morning people and there's evening people? Is yeah. that are you more of an evening guy? Is that why you kind of put it together like that? Well, I mean, let's be honest, it's harder than heck to w- wake up one hour before you should every single day of the week, which is really what the miracle morning um, promotes is the whole concept of, you know, the morning ritual. And if you go and Google like success rituals uh, of the very highly achieved successful individuals, they all have a mor- morning ritual. But I believe and I realized through kind of my own uh, ritual that I created that uh, that any morning ritual is re- really starts with the evening. And I, I kind of came across it accidentally in that um, I every night I would regurgitate my to-do list, um, kind of back out on a yellow pad right before I went to sleep. Um, you know, many of us do. We'll grab our calendar. We kind of order our day for the next day. Um, you know, as we're sliding into bed, whether it be something we write down or just something we think through or even just looking at your calendar and realizing what are the pressing things for tomorrow. <laughs> um, I, I got, I got up to, you know, I got up to my room and I usually had a yellow pad next to my uh, bed that I would just kind of order my day. Cause I was much, much more, uh, I, I guess, able to, to complete things the next day, as long as I kind of put my mind to it the night before. And I realized, uh, well, actually there was a stack of three by five cards on my nightstand. Cause my kids had been, um, uh, like studying spelling words with the three by five cards and my yellow pad had gone missing. So I thought, would that be cool if I didn't if I didn't write down all the things I was going to do tomorrow, but instead I just wrote down three great questions on this three by five card. So wouldn't hmm. it be, what I realized is that our to do list we're we're big kids, right? We're adults. We know exactly what we need need to do if you think about it. And yet most of us have like 80 items on our to do list, literally 80 items of which we get to maybe five of them, maybe none of them. If you're anything like me, you you literally, if you don't get to your to-do list, you'll just cross off a few things that don't apply anymore. Because then you literally yeah. feel like you did those few things, right? I mean, if you're like me and you got too much on your calendar, you might create some white space. Hey, hey bro, I, I got to push it till next week, right? Because you just need white space in your calendar. You're just It's just jammed up because you're using your calendar like a to-do list, right, Matt? True. I mean, you literally, you literally, literally are putting <laughs> tasks in your calendar in one-hour yeah. blocks, right? Yeah. I know, yeah. right? And so we're all big kids. We know exactly what we need to do. As realtors, we know exactly what we need to do. And by the way, the, the pro tip is all you need to do is be in front of or talk with people that want to buy or sell. That's like the whole job, yeah. right? Like literally everything else can happen autopilot. You're, you're smart enough to autopilot the thing. You just need yeah. to know humans, right? And, yeah. and listen for change because mm-hmm. everyone will tell you when there's change in their life. Social media is a dream scenario for hearing about change. I love yeah. when you systematically see like the wife omit every single picture of her husband from every <laughs> single page on Facebook. What is oh, that code yep. for? For What's that code for in real estate? Divorce <laughs> or, pay, or, or paycheck. <laughs> when, when, when the last daughter goes to college, what's that code for? You know, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's and it's code for like a husband and wife, uh, uh, you know, or partners are really looking, you know, taking a new look. Like, is this where we want to live? Is this how we want our life to be? It feels kind of lonely here. You know, I mean, what, you know, what, what is it code for when someone says, uh, 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 looking to remodel our kitchen, any referrals for contractors? Uh, that's code for I hate my house, but I'd rather just use the same amount of money that it costs in closing costs to remodel my kitchen and buy a year or two, but we're still going to hate our house, right? So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I mean, that, that ultimately that's code, but that's what, that's what yeah. it's code for. I mean, it's code for we don't like our house, but we're going to try to make it work. Right. Yeah, that's and funny. so, so I jump in on that stuff, but that's, that's a pro tip thing. But what, what I, what I realized in the, uh, what I realized uh, on, on, on all of this is that as you, as you become, as you ask great questions, because as successful, highly achieved individuals, we don't ask enough great questions anymore. We don't ask questions and then wait for an answer. 
Like we're just trying to figure out the answers without ever asking the questions, right? So all we do is we pride ourselves on having answers. Highly successful, highly achieved individuals, they have lots of answers, but they never ask great questions. And you've heard that quote that, um, you know, our life is, uh, the, our successful life has a lot to do with the questions we ask or the mm -hmm. quality yeah. of the questions we ask. So all I do right before I go to bed in the last five minutes is write down three great questions that I don't know the answer to, resisting the desire to answer them. And then I figured out, because I started studying it, that there's this science of sleep. We've all slept on things, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have slept on things, right? Big decisions, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, hire assistant, you got to sleep on it, you know, make sure it's a good fit. I don't know. You know, you, you sleep on a new investment or, you know, in your business or whatever. Right. Uh, and, and it's the same concept that as you ask a great question right before you go to sleep and then use the power of sleep, which by the way, uses different parts of your brain. When you're sleeping, it's not using that real common sense part of your brain. It's using far, it's, it's accessing answers creatively to your questions by using kind of the intrinsic or the, uh, ex extrinsic, depending on if you're awake or asleep, mm -hmm. kind of areas of your a brain. And so that's what I started doing is writing down these three great questions. And that's what the book is all about is that evening ritual, just five minutes before you go to sleep. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the, Einstein was, is famous for his naps. You know, he would, he would sit there, have a problem and just go take a nap. And, you know, a lot of the geniuses and a lot of the folks that we that's idolize, right. he took, they, they all took a lot of naps because your brain will go into that, that, that when you're stressing over like, Oh my God, should I or shouldn't I not, you know, buy this yellow pad? And it's a big decision for you because it's a, it's a $4 investment yeah. and you're stressing out about it. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, I'm going to go nap it out. And then you come back and you're going to be clear headed about it. You're not going to be stressed yeah. about it. And I, and I honestly do. I love sleeping on things when it comes to something yeah. that's a big, a big idea. Cause you always come out more clear headed. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Our brains well, are a fascinating thing. Well, mm -hmm. Greg, what you're saying is interesting because what you're really doing by sleeping it out is you're really surrendering to the fact that you are not entirely certain on what the right answer is, right? So you're surrendering, and that's the thing. We don't do enough of that. We just we don't surrender enough to the um, the life we haven't yet lived, if you will, right? <laughs> so right. We, so as we open up to that and say, hey, you know what? I don't know the answer. I'm going to sleep on it. Ask the question. Go to sleep. Well, it's because we're, we're so ego, ego driven that if we aren't smart enough to figure it out right then and there, and then we're going to look silly and we're stupid in front of another person or your spouse or something else, then you're like, oh, shit, let's Google it. And then that, that completely defeats the purpose of actually yeah. letting your brain work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you'll get some creative answers, too, if you open up like that. So mm -hmm. answers that you normally yes. wouldn't have come up with. So, yeah, Yeah. exactly. Because your brain is making associations and, and more creative associations while your yeah. conscious mind is not there trying to direct traffic like a horribly incompetent. Oh, it's cop. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I wanted to. I want to dive into um, a couple of other things like the like some specific questions that you would suggest. Yeah. But uh, where's the best place to connect with you, get the book and all that good stuff before we dive back in? Well, easiest place for, you know, for my coaching business, as well as the book, as well as uh, several free chapters on the book or what I have. I have this thing called the fast launch, which is uh, where you can get uh, downloads of uh, that. Uh, what I call the five minute epic evening ritual. So you can get mm -hmm. a PDF of that as well as free chapters, as well as coaching videos is all at James Colburn, C-O-L, B as in boy, U-R-N dot net. Very cool. And obviously, it's on Amazon, but that link is on my site too. So just uh, jamescolburn.net. Cool, awesome. <laughs> and then we've got uh, we've got Argonex classes coming up. Is getnowbusiness.com, guys? Go check that out. That starts uh, July third, the first Monday in July, and uh, so that is all about Ooh. James. You mentioned just you know, yeah. Well, we might have to change that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it starts July 10th. How, how's that? Yeah, I think that might work better. Right. Oh, we'll start July 10th. That's fine. Greg, <laughs> Greg vetoed it. Does no live class on the third. He's going to be on his couch uh, napping for genius. Uh, I yes, I will. All that. <laughs> Einstein did it. Damn it. <laughs> if it's good enough for Einstein, it's good enough for Greg on the July 3rd. All right, so guys, next class is July 10th. Um, I will change that on the landing page and in all the emails and all the stuff that I put together this morning. Thank you, Greg. Um, <laughs> next class will be July 10th. Guys, it's all about what James said, which is having more conversations with people and listening for the need and hopefully 
targeting people that have a connection to you. So there's already some credibility, there's a connection, there's an affinity there, so there's already trust to make it much easier once you uncover that need, that they will be likely to do something with you and pull the trigger faster because there's already a connection. So guys, that's that's the whole theme of Get Now Business, so go to getnowbusiness.com and check that out. Um, Stefan says, I just woke up, so I'm ready, good. Um, <laughs> Stefan uh, is watching us on Facebook, just up from a nap, fantastic. Um, nice. Stefan, was, <laughs> Stefan was with us in, in LA yesterday. I'm sure he got back to uh, to Paso very late uh, last night with all the traffic, so we totally get it. Yeah, um, and then uh, Paul says here, he says, well, if it, if it, if it, Einstein says it's okay, nap away. <laughs> <laughs> we just gave real estate agents like the green light for laziness. Excuse to napping, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to let my subconscious sleep on that. Yeah. All right. So so let's dive, let's dive back in. If only uh, dieting so what, worked that way. I mean, uh, should I have that chocolate? Should I not? I'll just sleep on the chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, it might. It's, you never know. If you, can get, if you can get to sleep without having a midnight snack, I've found that to be very effective. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> I'm, I'm a midnight snack guy, so the earlier at night I go to bed, the uh, the the more uh, the more I keep off the excess pounds. All right, so questions. Um, I Jane or I, I love questions. I absolutely love them, Greg. I gave a couple of them yesterday in our session. Um, Frank from Buyer Marketing, my mentor, same way, loves questions. Like I've got a list of like 11 or 12 questions that I sit down, mostly on the weekends when I can like step out of the business and kind of uh, think bigger picture a little bit. Um, but I've got like 10 or 11 questions that I just cycle through on a, on a pretty good basis and, and always ask, what are some of your favorites, especially for that evening? With you? Well, I mean, I just, when I wrote the book, I wrote the book in uh, uh, three sections. So you've got uh, the three types of questions. And by the way, the questions that I'm suggesting that we ask change each night. So you're not asking, uh, in my world, the same questions each night, but rather um, three, what, the, what I call it the three re's. So it's reassess questions, re-engagement questions, and then reaffirming questions. Hmm. Um, with that, so like on a reassessment question, that's really just taking a close look at at where you're at today. So mm -hmm. uh, when I started thinking about reassessment in my world, in my paradigm, I started thinking, you know, like, for example, the language that I use internally, like we're the worst to ourselves, right? Like if if you heard some of the things that I say to myself, like, I, you know, you would like, how do you, why are you friends with that guy? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, true. so, so, uh, you know, and also, you know, just our, our, on reassessment, like our comfort zones, because our comfort zones keep us yeah. from connection. So we, we run yeah. back to our comfort zones, whatever it might be, and it because we that's where we're comfortable. But typically where we're comfortable is not where we're meeting new people, right? Yeah. Um, so it, yeah. it is an interesting. Uh, or building uh, new skills or building yeah. new assets or anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have, I have three or I have five examples of um, reassessed questions, but I'm only mentioning a few. And the, well, another one that I like is the what I call Lego time, which I've already touched on. But it's really like not – I mean, you don't have to have kids to play Legos. What I'm saying is – you you want to play Legos in life with friends with 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 relationships. You you want that kind of lightness as a part of your life. That that's an extremely important part of who you are. And so when you skip that and you've got blinders on and you're just chasing after the next deal, you miss that. You miss the juice of life there. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there's um there's a friend of mine. Well, Greg, we've had him on the show, Pasquale. He talks a lot about um he did a whole recording on like the six suppressed elements of daily success, and one of his perspective on it, which I think is really good, is you have a definite starting point of the day, and I'm I'm terrible at this, right? And and I'm sure a lot of us are. We kind of just start. Right? We don't mentally gear up and say, okay, this is the official start of my work day. And this is the official end of my work day, so, right? So when you have a family, you like, you know, you write the things down at the end of the day that are on your mind, get them off your mind and say, all right, that's it. And it's done and that's it. And now I'm going to move on. And I'm going to fully be engaged with the next thing, whether it's going out with friends or being with family. I think if we did that, it would help a lot. But we tend to just start and then we just kind of stop working. A lot of times we stop with email. And man, that's unless you're clearing your inbox to zero, which how many of us actually do that? Essentially, you're spending like the last half hour in, in email hell and just going, oh, I have like 20 more <laughs> things to do. And then you just kind of you get to the end of it. And you just kind of run out of gas and then just stop like processing email. And that's how your workday stops. I find myself doing that a lot. And that's one of my missions is to knock that off and have a definite end to my workday where I get everything off of my mind to prevent exactly that from happening. 
Yes, yeah. And I call it ramping down for sleep. So instead, you know, yeah. highly achieved, high, highly successful people, we kind of, okay, we can't bargain with the morning. We've got to wake up at a certain time, typically. Uh, <laughs> we can't we, bargain with the morning. <laughs> we can't, we can't bargain. We get, Greg but, can. But in the, Greg oh, attempts to, but. <laughs> but it, it's interesting, though, because, you know, if you want to feel like a massive loser, don't wake up, right? Mm, but right. if you, but if you want to, but do you feel like a massive loser for staying up till one? No. Right. So so that's it. So so what I'm saying is that interestingly enough, highly achieved, highly successful I individuals like I think it happened when we were kids, like we were all wanting to stay up like the adults. Right. Then yeah. at one point we became an adult and we're like, I've arrived. I get to stay up until whenever. Right. Well, when you're highly <laughs> successful, highly achieved, it's like, you know, I, I talk in my book about um, how like, you know, I'll have a glass of wine. Right. Well, once you open a bottle of wine, what does that mean? Well, well, in Greg, in Greg's world, it either throws it out or or the bottle disappears. The bottle Although disappears. May not, well, the bottle yeah, disappears. I mean, yeah. day old wine is just not okay, right? No. So you pretty much you're pretty much committing oh, the four on. glasses, right? It's alcohol abuse. It's right next to child abuse. It's it's, it's uh, a horrible crime. Horrible crime. <laughs> <It's> horrible crime. <laughs> so, so, but but really, it's not. You're not ramping down to sleep, right? Now, I'm not saying right. give yourself a bath and read yourself a book. Right. But I'm saying, hey, listen, let's turn off some, you know, I mean, let's turn off some email. Let's turn off some screen at some point. Right. Let's take care of ourselves a little bit and set ourselves up for success. So, for example, if to, if you want to wake up grateful in the morning, for example, just, you know, everyone says be grateful. Right. So mm -hmm. if you really if you want to wake up being grateful in the morning, how do you set that emotion? You so think about it at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the morning, the evening, the morning is predicated by the activities, the last five minutes before you go to sleep, because your brain goes to work on it for however long you're sleeping. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I have a, a friend in my life right now, and we ask each other daily three things. What are the top three things you're grateful for? And what and, and then what is your affirmation for the morning? And it, 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 I, I can tell you, I don't know what it is, but once you, you actually put an intention behind finding an affirmation and finding three things or 10 things, try to come up with 10 things you're grateful for right now, write them down. It is harder than you think. And it's really sad to actually think about that. But if you start actually start thinking about it on a daily basis, you can be, I mean, dude, I am thankful that I'm able to a, travel and, and go down to LA and hang out with really cool people. I'm thankful for my teams around me. I'm thankful for the fact that I, you know, have a home that I love I could, to come home to with my two furry idiots, you know, and that, that are waiting for me. You know, I, those are things that are thankful for, but start thinking about the things you're thankful for, guys. And like James was saying, it's gonna open up a different part of your brain and you're gonna, you're gonna start becoming, well, I, yesterday I was sitting on the plane, it was a nearly empty plane, dude. I got that like, exit row with a seat when there's no seat in front of you. Being six foot five, I'm like, ha oh, oh, ha oh, ha oh. ha. First class on a Southwest flight. Yes. Small things, right? <laughs> totally changed my whole flight. I just sat there and deleted photos and played Angry Birds and kicked it. I was so happy, man. An hour and 20 minutes went by like that. But that's what that's what you're talking about, James. I mean, like the small things in life can make the, the the bigger things make it easier for you to to you know deal with if you're thankful for anything else in life. Well, and and so one of my reaffirmed questions is called granular gratitude. So what I realized, mm -hmm. is, you know, I mean, I'll I'll ask my kids, what are you grateful for? And they're, oh, the roof over our head, or you know, that that you know that there was no poison in our food. Mm. That's a joke. That's a joke in our household, but I do think oh. it's, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. is that a semi-regular occurrence I need to watch out for? <laughs> My nine-year-old thanks God that our food's not poisonous as a part of her prayer for dinner. But uh, back yeah. to the story. <laughs> no so, more cable uh, television for her. No more cable television. <laughs> That's right. She's been watching a little too much Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> but but I have this thing called granular gratitude because what I realize is the powerful gratitude are in the small things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the yeah. little little things right that you didn't know was going down when it did but then when you look back you're like oh my gosh like for example in a real estate person you know it's like i met this person i just thought you know i'm going to help them buy this place and then it ends up that you know 15 referrals later right yeah. you know and you know five hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars of additional commission right all mm -hmm. because all because I said, you know, hi to this person, you know, and asked if they could use my help or whatever, right? I mean, it's just, you start looking at that. By the way, that's not, that's, that's 
that's for you, right? That's not just, you know, accidental yeah. luck, right? You you showed up for that, right? So, and you were looking for that. Granular gratitude is the ability to look back now at those moments, relationships or connections, or in its most of the time, just those things. It has a lot less about the roof over your head. You know, the one thing that I always tell myself and I tell everybody else, if they're having a shitty day or if they're having a great day, I always say someone's having a real shitty day. And I say, you know what? You need to stop complaining right now because you are exactly where you need to be in your life at this very second. That makes everybody stop. They're like, what? I'm like, you are exactly where you need to be because if you got that deal, if you worked with that buyer, if you whatever happened, if you dated that person and why and then broke up, you are right where it needs to where you need to be for your final journey. You know, as you move through this crazy thing called life, but people get so caught in the weeds they don't see the actual trees, right? And then people when they actually start thinking about it, they're like, huh. If you are, if you look at it, like, be thankful for anyone who's listening to this right now. You are the sum total of every decision you've ever made. So you be thankful for that opportunity. You're fucking alive. That's Straight a win. Up. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> it's, well, I'm saying, I'm saying, dude, you're hurling through space on a little teeny ball. Just, yeah. you know, quick FYI. Okay. <laughs> you're hurling through an endless space on a freaking ball. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if there, oh, it's not endless. What if someone said that? Oh, really? So if there's a wall up there, what's behind the wall? You know what I mean? Like, no, dude, it's straight up. It's straight up endless, right? Like, it's, oh, there's a wall. I get it. So then, like, on the other side, there's nothing as well. That's endless. Okay. So <laughs> so if you're hurling through, but I say you get a 90-second funeral on deals. Like, when if, if someone goes oh. and mm -hmm. writes up a deal at an open house, shame on you. Get, I call it becoming a dispassionate observer of your own life. Yep, Look yep. down. One of the biggest complaints I hear, because I work with uh, 80 um, real estate, um, I work with the owners of 80 real estate offices as a consultant for a, a large Pacific Northwest real estate firm. And one of the biggest complaints I hear is I only have what I need. I never have more than I need. I have just what I need. And I go, dude, pinch yourself. I mean, seriously, like you, you don't have, have less than you need everything yeah. you need. Right now, I get it. Right. And by the yeah. way, if you want more than you need, then you're going to have to design, create a uh, picture, imagine, you know, that you need more. Right. You'll only have what you need. If you want more than you need, then you're going to have to imagine you need more than you need. You know what I mean? It's it's oh, it really yeah. is. Uh, it's all about uh you know, it's all about that granular gratitude in the things, in, in the small things that create made big things. Yeah, and, and to, to piggyback off of what you just said, James, is the fact that your brain is a phenomenal problem-solving device. If you give it a $2,000 a month problem, it will get a $2,000 a month solution. No more, 2000 If you give it a 20000 problem 20,000 solution 200,000 or 2 million dollar yeah. problem 2 million dollar solution yeah. so if you want more yeah. Yeah. start thinking bigger end of story if you if you lie and say it's a 2,000 dollar problem but really it's 1500 dollar problem you're going to get 1500 you're going to get 1500 dollar problem it's, <laughs> so it's, you know it's perfectly that's why I, that's okay so that's why I no longer worry about taxes I used to stress out with this tax thing, right? And I thought, but I always have it just what I need, right? So just shut up, James. Sell some houses. <laughs> I, mean, I, do, I don't understand. You want to raise, sell another house, mm -hmm. right? Seriously, if you want to raise, sell another house. It's that simple. You know, I, your, your phrase of being a dispassionate ob observer of what's going on. Like I just started off the show saying, look, I probably lost $200,000. $300,000 in commissions. And you know what? I'm not bitching about it. I had my 90 second funeral. I sat there and bitched at myself like, nye, nye, nye. And I, and I'm like, all right, pick yourself up, bitch. Let's go. You know? And, and well, or, or you look down and you go, oh, isn't that cute? So Greggy is worried that he didn't make another quarter of a million. You're <laughs> right. Like, there's that. You say, That's what dispassionate observer. Once you say that, you're like, oh, would man. you shut up? It's like, seriously, you're the one that didn't keep in contact. Right, like you're straight up the one that didn't systematize that. Oh, I own that bitch, yeah. dude. I mean, I was straight oh, up yeah. calling leads back from like 2015. I'm like, I hi, I'm Greg. I called you like two years ago. I totally suck. Did you sell? <laughs> yeah, it was only last year. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but 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 also, one door closes, two doors open. My rule yep. on that in real estate mm -hmm. is the only way you see the two doors open is to look for them. So if you th if you if you lose a listing, for example. 
if you view that as a loss, right, rather than a gain, then it is just that a loss. But if you look at that that listing that you lost, right, as an opportunity for two more doors open, because normally the listing you lost, you couldn't stand that person anyways. Yep. I mean, that, let's, let's, let's be honest, right? So in <laughs> no, a way, you were absolutely no complete. You were you paid whatever uh, mm -hmm. thirty two thousand dollars to get rid of them, basically, yeah. right? you know. <laughs> but but then, <laughs> which you know, you just got sometimes you got to buy yourself out of a problem, right? But then you get yeah. two doors opening, right? But you only see the two doors opening when you watch for it, right? Yeah. You, know, but, you know, yeah. And I'm so I'm actually I'm really thankful for that because I was I was bitching about it. Then I went through it. And I'm like I'm really pumped that I lost the I lost the deals. The reason why is that I didn't do a good enough job to deserve them in the first place. So I would maybe would not have I wasn't in the right place to actually serve them at the right level. But I'm in the right place at this point. And I'm thinning out my thinning out the herd so that now I can serve the people that I'm that I'm going to meet in the future. My well now ex coach, um, you know he 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 basically said, Greg, I don't really think that you can do what you say you're going to do. I'm like fuck you dude i'm gonna do double x. it yeah you, you think i can't do this you are oh, x I'm, I'm, i am i am doing it now i'm gonna i'm gonna say yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but i'm gonna God. do it but, 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 but what i'm really happy about is it lit a fire under my butt now i got a flame that's it, like blue flame under me under my rear end very uncomfortable but i'm yeah, but i'm gonna reach that level and that's what i'm thankful for that's the cool part about it yeah matt's like oh lord blue oh, flame yeah. right. matt, matt so, Wilson, Wilson. Am, <laughs> yeah, all right. I got, I got, I got to reel this in. Okay, so first of all, James, I put the, I put the link to, to your site in the Facebook Thanks. comments, guys. So go, go check that out. Connect with James. Grab the first few chapters of the book, JamesColburn.net. But I'm curious, just like from your perspective, since you're so active, you've gone through this whole like transformation, mental process, like really changed how you approach it. So I'm just curious, like on a practical level, how does it change how you do business on a daily basis now? Well, I'm, you know, there, it, I call it real being a real estate slut. Uh, yeah. So you you, you, know, you can be a real estate slut, it's right? Very, but, you know, very visceral. Yeah. There's nothing that feels good about it. They're just right. a real estate whore, real estate slut. You pick the word, right? Okay. Uh, or and then by the way, I know that I'm looking at two guys that don't want to be doing the real estate by accident thing either, right? Yeah. So there's that sense of you know like, oops, I sold another house. That's not cool either. I want to be really intentional about it, right? Right. Although although I do think that there's there's power in realizing you know in I just say that, you know, my, my approach is significantly different because I, I have created this wonderful, perfect avatar of exactly who I want to work with. And what I, what I realized is that most people know exactly what they don't want. And they know how to tell everyone in their world what they don't want. Have you ever, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. Hey, where do you, you know, where do you want to go on vacation? Well, I'll tell you, I don't, I know for sure. I don't want to go where it's cold. Well, I didn't ask you where you didn't want to go. I want to know what you do want, right? Well, you ask a client, what do you guys want? Well, what we know for sure is we don't want a split level, right? You know, it's like, or whatever, right? You know, certain kind of house, or, you know, we don't want to be on a busy street, whatever. No, I asked you what you did want. What's interesting is as we know exactly what we want and we tell others what we want, that's what we get. Yeah. No, it's not magic. This isn't the secret or something. This is just being straight up clear on what you want, right? If you want mm -hmm. a red car, all you see on the freeway is red cars. Mm -hmm. If you want to buy a certain car, you're going to see that sort of, I did, dude, I thought I was the only one that wanted that car. And then all of a sudden, everyone on the freeway has that car, right? <laughs> and they're parked in, you know, and they, and they look at, they wink at, they're like, the drivers wink it the second you like, it's the weirdest thing. Like once you like that car, then it, you know, then everyone, they're like, yeah, I can tell you like my car, right? Like, I mean, so, so. Are you getting my car? You getting my car? Huh? Come on, Come on. Come on. So, so I, so I say the biggest, I say the biggest thing is knowing what you want and then telling others what you want. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. but it starts with to know what you want. It starts with asking great questions. And, yeah. you know, I created something that you can do in your sleep, which Americans love. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is ask three great questions. By the way, my book's not just for Americans, but you get it. And so yeah. you can ask three great questions and freaking go to sleep. You yeah. know, it's like, come on, man. That's way easier than the miracle morning, right? So let's make it, break it down to be really, really simple. Then I got a really funny oh, story for you. Actually, I'll tell this funny story first. Right here <laughs> is a picture of a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8 white chrome rims, red rotors, brake rotors, white. right? White. Did you say white? Yeah. It, it, it's white. And I, and, I, and I do the wash, damn it. I'm from Colorado. <laughs> um, but my, my excuse, that, that photo right there, a carbon copy exact image of that vehicle 
My business partner bought the damn thing because I talked about the freaking car so freaking much. Yeah. So yeah, I talked oh, about yeah. what I wanted and boom, it arrived. Just wasn't mine, yeah. so I got to rephrase. Right. But, right. But, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, you, you do drive a Mercedes that also matches the Mercedes that's up next to the Jeep Cherokee. Up right on there, your yes. And yeah. So and so you you experience both the positive and negative. <laughs> I don't like the negative, Matt. I don't like the negative. Uh -huh. James and I were just talking about positive. Stay positive, uh -huh. Johnson. Yeah, I would yeah. recommend you do the same as you uh, yeah. as you leave the parking lot and, and key key your business partner's Cherokee. No, it wasn't me, Chris. No, but James, right. I mean, what, what are th what are three examples of, of easy questions that people could ask that ha you have found to be very profound and impactful, so they can put training wheels on their brain and start this process without you know you know uh. Boom. Falling over hurting, and never getting up. Hurting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean the five minute epic evening ritual? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, first of all, let's just be honest. You got everyone's chasing a needle that's going up. But by the way, what goes up goes down. Mm -hmm. and what goes up goes what goes down goes up. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is this is less about, you know, you chasing the needle upwards and placating your ego. Talk about dispassionate observer going, oh, that's, you know. You know, he didn't, he, you know, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where you, we, we end up play, you know, we like, we get so lost in the transaction, the next deal and being the guy and, and, you know, and then, you know, all of a sudden we're like, hi, hey, you know, a postcard got returned, pull up their address. Oh my gosh. They listed with who, you know what I mean? And then, <laughs> that dude? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, of course, you haven't kept in touch. We with them would for never. Years. We would never yeah. think that. <laughs> no, no, We've never said we that. Wish we wish. We wish them well. We right? only wish them well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye. But, we, we wave. But, oh, man. <laughs> but, but that. But that said, I think that we owe it to ourselves to build fulfillment into our 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 business plan, not just on a yearly basis, not just in you know whatever the last quarter of the year, but actually on a on a daily basis. And by and how to do that on a daily basis is that great? Ask great questions rather rather than try to just come up with a new answer. And mm -hmm. and then the next morning, listen for the answer because it'll be delivered to you. The difference between me yep. and most is that I'm asking three. I'm sleeping on it. I'm working on that sleep on it muscle seven days a week. So the difference between me and most is that I'm actually working on on the sleep on it muscle every single night by asking three great mm -hmm. questions and then opening mm -hmm. myself up to the answer. But see, James, you said Go something ahead. right there that was very, 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 very important. I may have slipped past a few people. Hold on, hold on. Say profound. Profound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, okay. But I said, on, repeat, profound. repeat that statement, Greg. You said powerful, like profound. I'd prefer okay. <laughs> well, it is it's power, it's powerful and it's profound. So right, what, well, just, it, just hang so, back and let the profundity wash over you. Hang on. Why, I'm going yeah, to profound why. you if you keep it up. <laughs> 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 so, so this is what it is. He said, listen, once you ask, actively listen mm -hmm. for the answer. Be open to what the universe is, is going to show you because it will show up in your life. It might not show up the way that you exactly want it, no. but it will show up. And, and resist the urge to answer it. Yes, don't look for That's don't make point. it show up to you. It will come to you in the most common, you know, easy ways. Like when I do my coaching calls at night, my free coaching, the McDaniel Challenge, like if someone cancels on me, like someone canceled on me tonight, bitches. Um, but <laughs> I'm always aware of the fact that, like, and I always, and this is when I get excited because I don't know what tonight holds, but it's going to be awesome. And it's exactly what I need to do tonight, who I need to talk to. And that's what listening means, guys. Be open for another answer versus what you, what you want or think it should be. I mean, James, can you concur that? Well, yeah. I mean, when I was writing this book, of course, I lead this crazy busy life with no time, no spare time. I've got three kids. I, I'm very busy. But then I, I and so I was I actually here's I don't know for the people that are watching this. Here's all my questions for the last, I don't know, six months. So I keep all of them, oh. right. By the way, I got um, are there repeats use, in there, please? I, I, I read uh, I use extra thick um, Amazon. Uh, sells these extra thick three by five cards because I keep them with me through the day oh. and I revisit the questions. Right. And, uh, and I, and I get unlined cards because I don't want to feel like a to-do list. Um, hmm. and, uh, and then I just go back over. Um, but what's interesting about it is that by opening yourself up, by actually, um, 
opening yourself up to that without to the questions without answering them the creativeness shows up in in, in amazing ways and also what i say is you give access to the miraculous so they kind of uh I don't know whatever higher power that you believe in. You're you're opening yourself up to the to to the miraculous nature of our life. Like I said, we're hurling through the through space as well as the creative mind, the creative subconscious. Yeah, it really is. Wow, these things are not. They're they're only 17 bucks. You get a butt ton of them. Extra thick. Extra, extra thick. thick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dig them. that too. But um, right. we're both literally ordering them as we speak. All right, guys. We, <laughs> we could go. <laughs> okay. If you can't find right. it on Amazon, what do you say? Yeah, I funny. guess I can't have it. Yes, I that's right. It doesn't exist. exist in the world. There's nowhere. <laughs> you you couldn't go to a Turkish bazaar and find it. If it's not on Amazon, it does not exist anywhere in humanity's existence. <laughs> Or it's just Greg. Somewhere, just it's know. somewhere out okay. there beyond that wall in the galaxy you mentioned. It's whatever's on the other side of that. If you can't find them on Amazon, it's on the other side of that infinite wall. All right. So, <laughs> so James, remind everyone of how they should uh, reach out and connect with you and what's spe uh, specifically, what do they get when they go to the site? Well, if you go to jamescolburn.net, um, you can get our fast launch package, which is a few free chapters of my book as well as um, uh, a, a PDF of the uh, actual, uh, what it means to ramp down for sleep, as well as uh, what are examples of the three questions, the three reads, which would be, you know, reassess, re-engage, and re reaffirming questions. Um, uh, and, or you can, you know, purchase my book off the site, as well as Amazon, it's up to you. So uh, uh, for all of our ADD uh, uh, perfectionists out oh. there, uh, yeah, exactly, I know I'm with my people. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the audio book, the audio book will be out any day now. So for those of you, I mean, I, I read 40 books last year, but I didn't actually hold one of them. I just listened to them. So I agree with that learning. And so I've got an audio book coming out. So, so Matt, awesome. Matt, Matt, would yes. you, would you agree that James read 40 books? Because he makes fun oh. of me James, all the time. Because I don't read because I don't have an actual book. He chastises us. Oh, chastises us. We can't stand for that. No. Uh, I, I I give you a hard time <laughs> when you compare your reading to my reading. Greg, Greg I'm yeah. with you on Sorry. this one. I, yeah. I, and by the way, guys, my last one, I'll throw. I got to throw one. I've thrown a couple books out, but I'm telling you, never split the difference. Oh. is huge. Oh, we huge. interviewed Chris Voss here a few weeks back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I just reiterated that. That that book. Yeah. Go back, uh, go back and book. watch the episode with Chris Voss. Yeah. Okay, I'll go there. I'll go there. But, oh, man, two times. <laughs> to the, to the in, audience, yes. In the last week, in the last week. Two yeah. times I read it. He, it Seriously, it's so awesome. deep and thick. I mean, you cannot, I mean, if you just listen to it once, you're going to miss a ton of stuff. But, I mean, if you start listening, especially about the, the, the kidnappers that would, that would kidnap, like, during the week because they wanted the weekend money. Yeah. You know, if you, if you go back and you listen to why they actually did it and what the process was to yeah. negotiate that down, you could do that with well, as a buyer's agent negotiating down on, on a listing price. I mean, it's, there's so much cool shit in there. But I just like it, dude. <laughs> Let's just go gangster. You know, third world, uh, you know, third world terrorist on, 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 the, on the listing. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, I'm glad I'm mentioning something you guys are with me on. So. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, um, all right. So guys, uh, Greg just put the link in again for Get Now Business. Uh, for those of you listening on uh, iTunes or Stitcher, first of all, thank you. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and all that good stuff so you get future episodes. Um, but you can go to getnowbusiness.com. You can see our latest class there. Apparently, we're not starting on July 3rd. We're starting on July 10th because Greg has some very important work to do. I'm sure he'll be listening and reading to all kinds of books on Matt, July 3rd uh, when I, we're supposed to be in class. Matt, I, I call it Einsteining. Okay, I'm Einsteining. Einsteining. That's, I'm that one step below him. Term. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to enter that into the Urban Dictionary for the show. Uh, Greg is sorry. Greg is busy Einsteining. He'll get back to you in a moment. I'm Einsteining. Uh, what the fuck is Einstein? It's so important. I just said his lazy ass is taking a nap. He's napping for genius. All right. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow all of us on Facebook. Do not friend request us. We're probably nope. at or near our limits. Uh, make sure to follow us. Greg, anything do you want to say to wrap us up? Ah. <sighs>
you guys are absolutely beautiful, wonderful, incredible people. We are so blessed to have you guys as our followers, listeners, and interactors on these live shows. You guys, you know, we do it for you because we love you. We want to see you guys subscribe. We are, like I said, we are blessed to have you guys. And thank you so much. Share it out to other people that need to hear this information. We have amazing guests like James to come on where we can laugh and interact and, and joke around. And I know James has a good sense of humor because he's a Tommy Boy movie you know, nice. poster behind him. I saw and that. I love that. You know, uh, well, uh, you just, uh, somebody put, all right, so I we'll have to tell you the story. <laughs> oh, so yesterday at the event, Dave Pinnell, who's a bigger dude, he's like, hey, Matt, I got to take a picture of <laughs> your sports jacket. All I could think about was fat guy. Fat guy. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, or I could end yeah. with that. That's a great place to end the show. Yeah. Well, I didn't think uh, we wanted more. To put a guarantee on it. <laughs> yeah, no. No. Helen, Helen, this is th Helen. This is why I suck at sales. <laughs> 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 I could go on. Uh, that movie is epic, 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 oh, epic, epic, epic. But you guys, we love you. We love you. We love you. But you know what? Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>